What's up, CJ here. Drizzle ORM has released some new versions over the past couple weeks, and in this video, we're gonna talk about them. Now, if you haven't heard of Drizzle, they are a TypeScript-focused ORM, and they are really great. I have used them in all of my most recent projects, and they're a joy to work with. So some of the biggest updates you'll see are defining tables has gotten a whole lot easier, and then also they have a new way of defining the Drizzle connection that reduces a lot of boilerplate. And so about two weeks ago, they released version 0.34, and this got them about 40% of the way to version one. So the team is working hard. Um, they're doing as much as they can to get closer and closer to V1. Now, another major upgrade that happened was an upgrade to the documentation. And personally, this is one of the biggest gripes I had and a lot of people had with Drizzle is the docs were a little bit confusing to get into, but they changed the information hierarchy. They removed a lot of duplication. They made it easier to hide and show stuff, easier to find stuff. And so now it's really great. So I highly recommend if you haven't tried Drizzle and maybe you tried it in the past and you couldn't figure it out because of the docs, go to the docs right right now, uh, orm.drizzle.team, and just check it out. Uh, one of the biggest upgrades is they have this new getting started section. So from a high level, you can choose, okay, do I have a new database? Do I have an existing database? What kind of database do I connect to? Am I using some kind of hosted provider? And then for each of those, they have a walkthrough on getting started from scratch inside of your project to talk to one of those databases. So these guides are awesome. And then beyond that, the information hierarchy here is more flat and a lot easier to navigate. So it used to be that all of these providers were kind of like nested underneath Postgres or MySQL or SQLite. And so it was a little bit tricky to find. And and you had a lot of duplication of examples inside of there. Now it's nice and consolidated. So if you head into Postgres, this has a section on Node Postgres and then also Postgres.js. And then same thing for MySQL and then also SQLite. But if you want to connect to a database that has a specific type of hosted provider, then you can head into those docs as well. So the docs are great. Now is the time to start using Drizzle if you haven't yet. And again, now is the time to look at Drizzle again if you kind of skipped it in the past because you didn't like the docs. Now, about a week ago, they released another version. So version 0.35, and this got them 70% of the way to version one. So they've been working really hard um, and they're getting closer and closer to V1. And in the next release, they plan to support row level security and have a bunch more bug fixes as well. Now, one of the updates that got introduced in version 0.34 was this idea of a mono driver. And the idea that you could very easily connect to any database just by passing in the type of database you wanted to connect to. And so that's this example here where you literally just import Drizzle. And then now, instead of having to import your specific connection client and everything else, you can just pass in the type of database you want to connect to and Drizzle handles the rest. Well, it turns out there was actually an issue with having an API that looks like that. And so there's a discussion on the Drizzle repo that talks about why that wouldn't exactly work. And ultimately, that would have been a really nice API, right? So everyone, no matter what database you're using, you would have just imported Drizzle from drizzle-orm slash connect, and then it handles the rest. But this introduced some bundling issues, and there was an issue with like dynamic imports. And so they kind of scrapped that idea, but there is still a better way to connect to, data to databases. You just have to specify the type of database. And so the old way of connecting was you bring in Drizzle for your specific driver, and then you bring in your specific connection client, instantiate the connection client, and then pass it into Drizzle. And it was the same way for every type of database, no matter what kind of database you were uh, connecting to. But now in version 0.35, that same Drizzle that you imported before can just directly accept your connection info. So this removes a little bit more boilerplate, right? You don't have to define that connection client. You can just pass in your connection info directly, and Drizzle handles the rest. If you want to specify more settings or more options, there's now a connection property on that object where you can then and pass in the rest of the connection information as well. And then beyond that, you specify all of your Drizzle settings just like you did before. Now, personally, I think this is the best thing that Drizzle could have done because it removes a lot of confusion and a lot of boilerplate, right? Because if you go from one code base that's using Postgres and then another one that's using MySQL, the code is going to look almost exactly the same, right? Both of them could just be passing in the connection URL. The only difference is going to be the import. And so as developers become more familiar with Drizzle, it's going to be a lot easier to switch between code bases and a lot easier to switch database drivers if you really want to. Um, so yeah, I think this is a very welcome change. I'm okay with the caveat that you still have to import from the place that has your specific database driver, because when you're upgrading your code, as I'll show, all you have to do is just remove the connection client code and then just pass that directly in. Now, of course, the old way will still work for now. So you could actually upgrade to the latest version of Drizzle, not change the way you define the connection. It'll still work, but they are going to deprecate this way of defining it. So that way in V1, you have to define it in this more unified way. Now, since then, there's been a flurry of updates. So in 0.35.2, they introduced approximately approximately 240 tests uh, that check for ESM and CJS builds and compatibility. And this is huge. I think one of the things about building a library like this is if you're moving towards V1 and you want to show people that you are production ready and that your latest versions aren't going to break builds or break projects, this is the kind of thing you want to see in a repo. So this is awesome to see. They've got lots of tests. They're basically setting themselves up so that when they release V1, they're going to be production ready and they're not going to be breaking apps that are out there in production. And then one more update that got pushed pretty recently.
recently was a new libsql driver module. And so before you would just import directly from libsql, now you can specify the specific type of libsql client that you're connecting to, like node, web, or HTTP. Now, along with this idea of making the code base more production ready, moving towards v1, Andrew made a post that talks about what they've been up to. So they actually transitioned to working full time on Drizzle about six months ago. And since then, there are 12 people working on Drizzle development. And another thing that he pointed out that something that I haven't thought of, but actually makes a whole lot of sense and actually should give you some assurances when you're deciding to choose a library is they have a plan for successors. So I didn't even realize this, but GitHub has this way to define this inside of a GitHub repo, where if for whatever reason, a maintainer steps down or maybe they're not able to maintain a project anymore, or maybe they don't want to maintain a project anymore, um, they can specify successors who can then take over the project. And so if anything happens to the maintainers or they decide to stop working on it or whatever else, there will be a plan in place to make sure that Drizzle keeps being maintained and stays active. Now, all of this combined is just a really good signal that Drizzle is doing everything they can to make sure that they are production ready. This isn't just some random library. They are real competitors in the space and definitely a legit choice for choosing your TypeScript ORM. Now, I want to show you where in the code things will actually change if you upgrade to this latest version. And I actually have two different projects. I have one project that's using libsql in a single table, but it'll show you some of the breaking changes in libsql client and how you can update your settings to work with that. And then I also have a larger code base built with Drizzle. This has 13 database tables, all with relations and everything else. And so this is a really good case study of what your code base will look like if you upgrade to version 0.35. So first of all, the changes in libsql client. Here it used to be in your Drizzle config that you specified a dialect of SQLite and then a driver of Terso. Now, if you're using Terso, you specify the dialect as Terso. So now there are four options for dialect. There are SQLite, Postgres, MySQL, and Terso instead. And so this is a super simple change. You basically just swap out your dialect and remove the driver property if you specified it. But that essentially allows Drizzle to do the right type of inference and type checking whenever specifying DB credentials, because DB credentials for Terso can be slightly different than just plain old SQLite. They also made some upgrades to how they do migrations. And so for my code base that's using libsql client, it was super easy. Just change that dialect from SQLite to Terso and then remove the driver property. Now, the next major upgrade, which is another quality of life improvement, is automatic snake casing. So it used to be that when you define your tables, you also had to pass in a string with the database table name. And so you could think of it like the left hand side is how you access it inside of TypeScript. And then the string that you pass in is what the column name would be inside of the database. But you can see there's some duplication here, right? ID is the same, name is the same, description is the same. The only one that's different is from camel casing to snake casing. And so now in the latest version of Drizzle, if the column name inside of your database is the same as the column name you specify here, you don't have to pass in that string. So that actually removes a bunch of code. And then if you do want to manually map the column to something else, you can still do that, but they introduce automatic casing across your entire schema. So you can see in my code change here, I'm now passing in casing as snake case to my Drizzle config. And that means it's automatically going to take any camel case columns that I defined in my schema and then translate them into snake case whenever making database queries or generating the migrations. And so you need to pass that property into the Drizzle config because that's used when generating your migrations and, and running Drizzle Studio. But you also pass that casing property into your Drizzle instance. And so that way, all of the queries that are generated when your codes are running do the correct kinds of conversions from camel case to snake case. And then they also support camel casing in your database as well. So, so you could have your code base where you're using snake case everywhere, but then it's camel case inside of the database. You can you can, you can can mix and match if you, if you really want to. And so to see those changes in this simple libsql client code base here, you can see I'm passing in casing as snake case to my Drizzle config. And then also I'm passing in casing as snake case to my database connection. And then looking at the schema, basically I just got to remove code. So everywhere I had specified the column name manually, I just got to remove that. And now Drizzle takes care of the rest. The other change here that I kind of hinted at earlier is I got to completely remove the separate creation of the client. Now, I just took all of those settings that I was passing into create client from libsql and just pass those into the connection property that I'm passing into Drizzle here. And then I can remove the libsql import. I can remove that client creation. And so now there's less boilerplate, right? I can just literally pass in my connection info directly to that Drizzle instance. But now let's look at these changes in a code base that has a bunch of database tables. Um, so yeah, one table, that was fine. 10 plus tables uh, could get a little tricky. And actually it wasn't <laughs> for the most part. It was a very straightforward upgrade. Now, this schema is actually from a video that I did a few months back here on the syntax channel called real world drizzle schema. So in this video, I show some patterns for working with a large code base like this when you're using drizzle, because at a certain point, having a single schema file with all of these tables doesn't exactly make sense. And so I show how to structure that and also how to do more complex queries whenever you have lots of related tables like this. But let's take a look from the top. So this code base was actually using Postgres. So there were no changes I had to make to the Drizzle config. Everything just worked exactly the same after upgrading. But the one change that I made was adding the casing snake case property. So that allowed me to go through and remove all of the manual 
column names that I was passing in as strings because now those are going to be automatically inferred as snake case. And then for the connection file, very similar to with libsql client, I was able to remove this direct creation of a Postgres instance and just pass those same settings right in as the connection object here on the Drizzle instance. And then of course we have to pass in casing as snake case on the Drizzle instance as well. Now another change is I have a separate migration and a separate seed file which needed access to that connection to be able to close it after all of the seeds or migrations were run. But you can see here we can actually get access to that underlying Postgres client using dollar sign client. And so if anywhere in your code base you need access to that underlying client and it and not just for the case of Postgres, this will work for any database driver, you can use dollar sign client and then call any methods that you might need to. So in this case I was able to call the end method on that underlying client. And then from there all of my tables have been updated. So you can see I've gone through and removed all of the manual specifying of these column names. So this actually cleaned up the code base quite a bit. And I just went through and did this for every single table. Now, one spot where this didn't work automatically is for my street address columns. And so you can see here that I decided to camel case this as street underscore address underscore one. But the automatic camel casing that Drizzle does is actually street underscore address one without the other underscore there. And so because I wanted this to be purely a code base change, I didn't want to migrate my database. I didn't want there to be any database changes at all. I want my database to exist as it was, but I just want my code to be simpler. I left these manual specifiers here so that way I wouldn't have to migrate my database. And so whenever you're upgrading your code base, you might come across a few fields like that where maybe the automatic naming doesn't work for you or maybe you still just want to specify it manually and you can still do that. But one other spot where I had to specify this manually is here when I was defining a unique constraint. So before I just called unique directly and it used the underscore names of the tables to create that compound key. But after upgrading, that generated compound key actually used the camel case names whenever creating this big long name here. So it was restaurant owner restaurant ID camel case underscore owner ID in camel case underscore unique. Uh, and again, I didn't want any any schema changes. So I went in and manually specified what it was before. Now, I don't know if this was intentional by Drizzle. I'm going to open up a discussion to see that under the hood when generating these constraint names, should they actually take into account the casing option? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but in this case, they didn't. And again, I didn't want any schema changes, so I specified it to be the old value. And so that was pretty much it. Um, now, again, like I've mentioned several times, I did not want any actual schema changes. I didn't want any migrations. So after making changes, I would generate a migration to see if Drizzle actually detected any changes between my old schema and my new schema. And I did this until there were no changes detected at all. And so my code base is up to date, but I don't have any sort of migration or anything else. So overall, I'd give this on a difficulty scale two out of 10. <laughs> It was, I didn't pull my hair out. Um, it was pretty straightforward to even figure out what was happening with those auto-generated columns as well. And so yeah, difficulty scale, two out of 10, but if you do want to upgrade, I think it's worth it because it reduces boilerplate and the code base gets a whole lot simpler. So that's it for these updates on Drizzle. Again, if you haven't tried it out yet, now's the time. The docs are better than ever, and I think Drizzle is pretty awesome. So definitely check it out. If you would like to get your hands on a shirt like this, check out Sentry.shop. We actually have it for sale. And $10 from every sale of this shirt actually goes to the Drizzle team. So if you want to support Drizzle, if you want to get some cool swag, definitely check out the Syntax shop. All right, that's all I have for you in this one. I'll see you in the next one.